In this next series of videos, we're going to look at the principles of mathematical induction, or proofs by mathematical induction. We will look at the first principle of mathematical induction within this video, or simply what we will call mathematical induction. And in, in a subsequent video, we will look at the second principle of mathematical induction, or strong induction. Please note that this was meant to be review, as you are required to know mathematical induction before entering this course, but we will spend time to study it in detail in case you have forgotten or haven't studied it at all. So the learning outcomes for this section is to be able to use mathematical induction to prove recurrence relations, summation formula, and inequalities, and you will get a chance to apply mathematical induction to solve both summation formula and inequalities, as well as is important within our course we will use mathematical indu induction to prove various recurrence relations. Okay, so let's look at the first principle of mathematical induction. So this method of proof is used to prove properties for all positive integers n, and we complete the following two steps. So we complete the basis step, and we show that the property holds for the first positive integer, 1, and then the inductive step asks us to show that if we assume that the property holds for a particular positive integer k, then we show how to prove it for the next positive integer. So we show how to prove the property for the k plus first integer using the assumption that the property holds for the integer k. So we will have an induction hypothesis, which is simply the assumption that p of, a, p of k holds for a particular for an arbitrary integer k, and we'll use this hypothesis to show that the property holds for the k plus first integer. Now, it often seems like a proof by mathematical induction is simply done by magic, or more so that this assumption that p of k holds is basically assuming what we're trying to prove, and therefore is not a proof. But in fact, what's very important is that we are not assuming that p of k is true for all positive integers. Instead, we are assuming that p of k is true for an arbitrary but fixed integer k. So k is going to be an arbitrary integer, but it's only representative of one integer. And we use that assumption to show us how to prove for the next integer in the list. So the basis step is very important because this gets us started. So this tells us how to prove the property for our very first integer. Typically, um, if a property holds for all positive integers, then it's going to hold for one. And so we show that it holds for, so that the property that we're trying to show for all positive integers holds for the integer one. And then the induction hypothesis tells us how to prove it for integer two, and then how to prove it for integer three, how to prove it for integer 4, and how to prove it for each subsequent integer, because if we assume that the property holds for k and show how to prove it for the next integer, and since k can be any integer, this essentially tells us, well, since we know that the property holds for 1, then by this step, this inductive step, we know through our proof of pk plus 1 how to prove the property for 2, and as soon as we have a proof of 2 based on this argument, we apply it again to prove it for 3 and 4 and so on. And because k is arbitrary, this allows us to conclude that it will be true for all positive integers because we have a method for proving it true for every subsequent integer. As I mentioned before, oftentimes we're going to look at properties holding for all positive integers, so our base case will start at the first positive integer 1. However, in some cases, a property may not hold for all positive integers, they just may hold for most of them. So starting from a point b, perhaps the property holds for all integers greater than or equal to b. And in that case, our basis case would start at the first positive integer that the property holds. So instead of proving for p of 1, if it's not true until positive integer b, we would our base case would be proving it for b and then applying the inductive step to show how to prove it for b plus 1 and then b plus 2 and so on. So you may still be wondering how it is that this really proves a property for all natural numbers with only two steps. So let's look at a particular example. 
So we're going to consider an infinite sequence of dominoes lab labeled with a positive integer. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and etc. For all positive integers, we have a domino. We're going to let our property of the natural number n, which is a label on the domino, be the proposition that the nth domino is knocked over. Okay, so we need to prove that every domino is knocked over. So we need to prove the property p of n for every positive integer n. So our basis case tells us how to knock over the first domino. So the base case, we prove that p of 1 is true, or the first domino is knocked over. The inductive step tells us that if whenever the kth domino is knocked over, it knocks over the k plus first domino. So if p of k is true, so if the kth domino is knocked over, so we assume that that happens, and we show how to knock over the k plus first domino. So how the kth domino is going to knock over the k plus first domino. So considering how dominoes work, right, we touch the first domino and it subsequently knocks over all of the other ones. And the process of the first one knocking over the second is within our proof by mathematical induction, the inductive step. So that process, the gravity essentially within this concrete example is the inductive step. So there's a process, an explanation for why if the first domino is knocked over, the second one is knocked over, and if the kth one is knocked over, then the k plus first domino is knocked over. So we know that this pattern follows because this is true in general. So it's not only a property from 1 to 2, but it's a property from k to k plus 1 for every positive integer k. So this models how a proof by mathematical induction works. If we know how to, to knock over or prove the property for the very first integer, and we know how to explain or to prove why if the property holds for k, then how the property holds for k plus 1. So using the fact that we know that the property holds for k to prove that it also holds for k plus 1 allows us to then conclude that or to apply this to every integer to, so, so that we get that the property is true for every positive integer. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more clear why mathematical induction works. And in the next video, we'll look at step by, the step-by-step -step process for applying mathematical induction so you know exactly what it entails.